it's a lot of labels being um, thrown around. Some people are applying them to themselves, the usual ones, and it's the, the usual suspects, solipsism, nihilism, and relativism. Now, I'm in a uh, bit of an exchange just in a comment section with, uh, although they're good comments, with Nicolas de Silantio, uh, where I'm having, or I'm expected to defend myself against the label of relativist. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that uh, for several reasons. First and foremost, I would say that somebody who is a relativist and not somebody who's having the title applied to them, as it were, hostilely, which, you know, is the way I take attempts to label me as a relativist as sort of a, a hostile act, because I don't, I, I don't apply that title to myself. Um, the reason why I would resist that is it's twofold. If your reasoning leads you to a position of um, relativism, it's not the same thing as being a relativist as an end in itself, is it? You can arrive at a position of almost any ism through a progression of um, a progression or a development of, in your thinking, um, as opposed to somebody who takes on the title of, say, solipsist, nihilist, um, relativist, and then seeks to impose that title or that that view of the world or of reality on everything else. It's a question of cart and horse here. Do you arrive at the position of, say, relativism? as one aspect of many that make up who you are or what your character is? Or do you say, I am a relativist and I want to spread the relativistic faith, as it were? They're two separate things. Actually seeing something in a certain light and wanting to promote it as an end in itself, these are not the same thing. Um, there may be elements of solipsism, nihilism, and um, relativism, relativism in what I'm saying. But, again, I have to fall back on, and I hate to keep doing this because it sounds like I'm soapboxing, I have to fall back on Syadvada, on the theory of maybe, or the theory of, some way, of, of in some ways. In some ways, yes, I agree, my position is solipsistic and relativistic. But I'm not a solipsist per se, and I'm not a relativist per se either. There are elements of each one in in me, and there are elements that negate that in me, in each one of these things. It, consciousness works on various different levels. I act in the world as though everything is real, although on another level, when I sit down and actually think about it, I, I go, okay, is everything all that real? Okay, so... There are elements of solipsism in my thinking, and there are elements of non-solipsism in my thinking. If I see a baseball heading straight towards my face, about to beam me right between the eyes, I'm going to duck. Why? Because I'm fairly convinced that something is going to happen that I'm not going to like. Maybe I can't agree on absolutely what has happened with everybody, but I do know that something that I'm not going to want to happen to me is seems to be set to happen. So in some ways, even though I'm saying I can't really un understand the fundamental nature of everything that's going to take place when the baseball cracks me in the forehead, um, that doesn't mean that I'm negating anything happening at all. Um, it's just when I'm being when I'm wearing my solipsistic hat, it's simply I'm saying I don't fundamentally understand what's taking place. I'm not saying that nothing is happening at all. That's the cart horse thing, the solipsist or the relativist versus the person who has absorbed so solipsism or relativism, as it were, as an outcome of their thinking, as opposed to somebody who is doing it in a doctrinaire or dogmatic kind of way. Um, you can't disabuse people of applying titles to you. It's just not, it just seems to be in our nature. And I said before, uh, identity itself is in a sense a hostile act because you're imposing something on something that doesn't really exist. Um, there's a configuration, and even as I said yesterday, configurationness is kind of arbitrary and artificial. 
um, there's a configuration of matter, energy, and empty space that looks different from another one. And so I say that is itself and not that thing over there. We can do that to people, too. For the purposes of utility, we can pigeonhole each other, and I don't think we can avoid doing that um, any more than I can avoid um, accepting the reality on in, on some level of a baseball bat whizzing toward or a baseball whizzing towards my face. I, I can't just pretend like it's not going to happen, even if I don't know ultimately what it is. Um, so yes. Um, Maybe you can say epistemological solipsism isn't the same thing as absolute solipsism because when you're talking about what you know versus what you assume, um, how much do you really know? Um, and when does knowledge, when does your, when do your assumptions take on the dimensions of a belief? Um, you know, non-contradiction, identity, and the excluded middle. Is that a belief? Um, Nicholas de Silentio yesterday said, well, we, we just can't think about what you're doing because you're abolishing science. You're abolishing your, your what is the word he, he used? You're cutting at the knees of uh, technology and science and economics and politics and all that kind of thing. No, I'm not. Not in the least. I'm only cutting at the knees of the idea that these things are necessary for politics, for economics, for um, any other, you know, sort of practical use you want to apply them to. Do things have to be absolutely true before we can apply them to the real world or what we assume to be the real world? No, they, we, they don't. Um, they can just be useful to us and we can apply them based on utility. Um, we can apply them based on any number of things. So if we um, act on assumptions, we are, in a sense, acting on beliefs, acting on faith, I guess. If you forget that they're just assumptions, that is faith. You can believe in the laws of physics in a faith-like kind of way, where you simply don't question them. You say that that's just the way it is, and I'm not going to th think beyond that. That's faith, if you ask me. Um, and... By the same token, if you're going to apply labels to other people, um, I won't necessarily agree with Kierkegaard that when you, if you label me, you negate me. But I would say that if you label me, you diminish your understanding of me. Because, as I say, if maybe you could apply the term relativist to me if you want to do so, that's fine. But you got to be careful. What does that term mean? Does that mean relativism is an end in itself in my case? I don't. I don't think it is. I may have arrived at a relativistic sort of position, um, but that's not the same thing as deliberately muddying the waters, which is, again, what you get accused of all the time, which is nothing more than an ad hominem uh, fallacy. You're just deliberately derailing things. You're deliberately causing trouble. You're being a heretic. You're being a troll. You're being um, a troublemaker. Um, just for the sake of it, of things, you're being some sort of um, philosophical anarchist in the pejorative sense of the term anar anarchist. You know, somebody who likes anarchy as an end in itself, Hobbesian chaos. Um, something of a joker from the new Batman movie. Some people just want to watch the world burn type thing. All right, you can say that, but again, all you're doing is you're being hostile in your criticism of somebody. Um, just saying that there's elements of solipsism in what somebody is saying doesn't mean that they are a solipsist as an end in itself. You understand the distinction between someone who actually is convinced of something or perhaps not convinced of something but has adopted a somewhat, a position that somewhat fits the label of relativist or solipsist or nihilist having elements of that in their thinking as opposed to someone who sees the spread of that idea as an end in itself. Um, so long as you apply labels to people to understand them, it, uh, I understand that it's useful and almost inevitable to do so. But you'd better be careful what you're doing with those labels because you may not actually be giving an accurate picture of what the person you are labeling actually is saying. It all depends on perspectives. Um, Heidelberg is now wrestling with the fact that 
he's referring to the first person perspective versus the second and third person perspective of existence of sentience or whatever and as those perspectives change you sort of see the difference that you come up with if you are trying to describe the first person perspective it starts to look solipsistic if you try to deal exclusively in the second or third person perspective you negate experience and in particular you negate things like suffering because suffering takes place in the first person so you've got to be careful first and second person perceptions of things are useful but and I won't say that they're incompatible but you've got to understand whenever you think of something whenever you're discussing something you've got to remember what perspective you're coming from are you coming from it from a first or second or third person perspective that's one thing the second thing is and I would actually say in my case it's the first thing that you'd have to consider is um, is the person whom you have labeled are they adhering to that label in your view of things as an end in itself or have they just arrived at a position that somewhat resembles the title that you're sticking to them um, this is where titles can become toxic because then you then you do get into the territory of Kierkegaard of if you label me you negate me um, because if you're saying this guy is a solipsist or this person is a is a relativist and that's all that that person is and that anything that sort of uh, interferes with that title or that negates that title or contradicts that title that I've applied to that person is irrelevant because first and foremost this person is a solipsist then I would or a relativist then I would say yes you have fallen into the negating is uh, labeling or labeling is negating kind of thinking he's just a relativist and that's all that we really need to say about him that's the kind of Kierkegaardian negation that I refer to and that's what you have really got to be careful of because if you want to say that I'm a solipsist that's fine but I would also say if you have to use that label or if you have to use the label relativist you're gonna to have to understand that I'm a relativist more or less as a result of something not as an end in itself first of all and secondly I'm many 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 more things than a relativist and a lot of it has to has to be based upon the point of view that I adopt um, experiential versus perceptual level or experiential versus outside level whatever you want to call it first versus second person um, these are not incompatible things but you've got to understand what you're referring to when you're talking about um, isms talking about various ways of seeing things um, whenever you say anything it's from a certain perspective and the first and second person that's just the beginning um, and again labeling is almost inevitable but you've got to be careful when you apply it because it might only apply in certain ways and in others it might be quite misleading <laughs>